believe Bobby's gone. I know. I told him to stop train surfing. We were right, we were trying to develop stuff beforehand. Um, we actually had another project that he'd written, um, Blunt Blades, so we tried to get up and that um, we had a few producers on board that then fell through, blah, blah, and I started to think that it was a bit too bleak. So, um, and at that stage we were living together, so we just started throwing ideas together and what sort of themes I'd like to work with and blah, blah, blah. So we wrote the story together and a lot of the ideas together and then Addison went and wrote the screenplay. It was written for Glenn Maynard, uh, the lead role, was written for him specifically. Addison made a short film that I helped with um, and yeah, I was just blown away by Glenn in that short film and I was like, this guy's fantastic, let's, why don't we get some, do something with him, you know, do you think he would be interested in doing a bigger role? And of course, Glenn, he hadn't, Glenn hadn't done a lead before so he was, you know, he jumped at it and he thought the script was interesting and different and Glenn brought a lot of his own stuff to the dialogue as well, especially all the video diary stuff that's very personal. Hi, I'm Warren Thompson, and today the most amazing thing happened. The love of my life came to my van. Everybody has someone they worship, whether it's a, an actor or, or a singer. Everybody has, has someone they love, like a soulmate. And for me, it's Katie George. I think we started in like October of 2013 and ended up in like mid-November, so yeah, about two months. Um, same deal, weekends and um, days off. Um, some some days, I think I think it was over school holidays, perhaps. So I remember we did do some during the week, so because the Mr. Whippy van was our biggest cost. Funnily enough, because um, I thought, oh, you know, we'll get one easy. That's kind of why I included it. I thought if we shoot during a week and it's not summer yet, and but no, because we wanted the old school sort of style. There's only there was only about three in Melbourne that I could find, and they um, they all knew about filmmaking. They had all you know they they're hiring them out for ads and stuff like that. So they were like, no, nah, it's a thousand dollars a day, or I don't, we don't care, you know. So the cheapest one I found was. 600 and the guy had to drive all the way from Geelong to set and everything so I had to schedule it very tight so I didn't you know had to hire it for as minimal days as I could which ended up being like about five days or something but the beautiful thing about the video diary stuff which takes up a, a fair chunk of the film was that was shot on a different camera it was shot on on a mini DV thing so it was a lot cheaper and all that and um, that was just the set as well was in the apartment me and Addison were living in and um, Warren's bedroom was actually my bedroom just redressed a little bit and you know whenever Glenn had a day off during the week and I did too I was working nights at the time that he'd just come over and we'd spend the whole day just in front of cam camera and he'd just do different versions of it just go over and over it what we liked what we didn't like expand on things include other things and just experiment with the tone of it all and so that was allowed us a great freedom in um, getting a fantastic performance from Glenn and sort of yeah developing the character and pushing it further. It played at Celluloid Screens in the UK that's a really good festival over there um, uh, so it got it got some it's had some really great responses people love Glenn I think he's a fantastic lead performance in it um, uh, Daniel Scarf was um, who produced Romper Stomper. He came on board as an executive producer after the film was made, which was after we shot and everything, because he loved it and he was like, you know, it's a knockout film, I remember him saying, and anything you can do to help us get it out there and all that. Um, but yeah, since I'd already worked with Monster, you know, they were always going to be an option. Um, Monster, they were developing um, Monster Fest, which has turned into a really awesome film festival. I thought it'd be cool to have it screened there. Um, so, you know, of course, they've just developed in Monster releasing it. And um, yeah, but we're currently looking for North America at the moment. Um, it's been released in Scandinavia on VOD and 
um, had interest in Germany and different places. So we're still, that's still fresh and new. We're hopefully um, see what we can do with it. I'm writing a, a script at the moment. I'm writing a couple of scripts at the moment that I would love to um, start talking to people at the end of this year. Um, I've got a, another script that I'm reading that I possibly could be attached to. Um, I'm working on um, I'm ADing a film later this year for Josh Collins. Um, I'm actually directing uh, a web series this weekend for Kristen Condon. But definitely the next film I'd like to you know do things a little bit differently. I've run out of money, basically. Yeah, you get. I've got, I've got some money back, definitely, but not, not, not enough to really, you know. I, you, you get some up money up front from each territory. Generally, try and aim for that. So the US and the UK, I got a little bit for that. But um, look, I, I'm, I still owed money, basically. So yeah, I haven't made a profit. Put it that way. You've got to just see it as a calling card, you know? It's a film that people can see and go, wow, that's really cool. He made that for 10 grand and, you know, let's see what else they can do. You can't go into it thinking you're going to make a lot of money. I mean, I, I, there's only a handful of films each year that, like, made on such a low budget and, and a runaway hit. So it's like, and it happens less and less now. Script is key. And I think, you know, that sounds obvious, but I know I've made that mistake lots of times and you know, here I hear other people make the same mistake is you, write, you either rush a script or you write a script and you're like, oh, you know, you know it's 90% there or less and you think you're going to fix it when you're making it and that's bullshit. It, it just can't happen. Even you can have a fantastic editor uh, and like, and editing you can get, you can do amazing things. You can, you know, can restructure the whole film, but if it doesn't have strong heart to it and, a, and a, you know a strong backbone you know you need a, a strong narrative if, if, if it's lacking and it's not there you're never going to fix it any other way so it's like you don't even start the wheels until you've got that script that's fucking amazing script you know